All right, so to fully understand what it means for a matrix to be symmetric or anti-symmetric, I want to look at the entries of a square matrix, and I'll show you three different blocks. So first, you have these entries, which are called the entries of the main diagonal. And then we have the ones that are above the main diagonal, so all of these. So these are the entries above the main diagonal, and I'll refer to them as the upper entries as well. And then we have the ones below the main diagonal or the lower entries. So these are the um, lower entries. All right, so the matrix A is symmetric if the upper and the lower diagonals are mirrored. Let's look at what we had over here. If we look at the, uh, wait, is it, yeah, if we look at the upper, let's erase all of this. So if we look at the lower, we have two minus one, three. The uppers were red, so that's two minus one, three again. And then the diagonal, well, it doesn't matter. Whatever is going to happen when you take the transpose, they're always going to just stay there. So the diagonal can be anything. So something is symmetric. If the upper and lower entries are mirrored, the diagonal's entries are free. Now let's look back at this matrix A that was Q-symmetric. We ended up having 0, 0 here and 3, minus 3 here. So here something strange happens. The diagonal must be 0, and you can see it, why it happens over here. You end up with x equals minus x, and that only works if x is 0. And then these two are mirrored, but with an extra minus. So the matrix is anti-symmetric if the upper and lower entries are mirrored with an extra minus and if the diagonal entries are zero. All right, so seeing the different divisions of the entries, that helps you picture what it means for a matrix to be um, symmetric and anti-symmetric, but it also gives us three new definitions for matrices. If I have a square matrix, A is diagonal if all its upper and lower entries are zero. So that means that if you look at the matrix, um, you're going to have zeros above, zeros below, and then the diagonal could be whatever you want, including zero. So these are free. So the diagonal entries may or may not be zeros. All right, we'll call a upper triangular if all its lower entries are zeros. So again, if you look at the shape of the matrix, um, what's underneath here, that will be zero. Um, the diagonal could be anything. And everything above can be anything, including zero. And so the only restriction is what's um, under the diagonal. So the diagonal and upper entries may or may not. So no restrictions on those, only restrictions on um, what goes on underneath the diagonal. All right, so a matrix is lower triangular if all its upper 
entries are zeros. And so in that case, all the interesting stuff happens on the diagonal and on the lower entries, but above the diagonal, you must have zeros. So again, the diagonal and lower entries may or may not be zeros. All right, so let's look at an example here. I have 0, 3 by 3. That's the zero matrix. I want to know if 0 is diagonal. Well, it's diagonal if everything above and below are 0. So I would need 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then the diagonal is anything I want. So does that fit the shape? Well, I have the three zeros, and I have the three zeros here. So yeah. It is a diagonal matrix. Again, we don't really care what goes on in the diagonal. Everything else is where our restrictions are. All right, is it upper triangular? So upper triangular means I have the three zeros here, but everything else is free to be what it wants. So that's an upper triangular matrix. and in this case, I don't care what goes on here, but I need these three to be zero. So, yep, it fits the definition of upper triangular because I have those three zeros. And is it lower triangular? Well, in that case, I need those three upper entries to be zero. Everything else, the diagonal and the lower entries, no restrictions on them. And so it would fit here again because I have these three zeros. And so, yes. All right, so these diagonal, upper triangular, and lower triangular matrices are going to be important once we start looking at determinants. These will be, um, it will be very easy to compute their determinants, so we'll use them often.